Hello from the Tukas Copy TV studio in Geneva. We are back with a technical analysis of the markets and with Jean-Francois of Sarsak. He's from the management joint trust with their product, FinGraphs.com. Welcome, Jean-Francois, to the Hi, studio. Daniel. So, last time you were here, you mentioned that the euro could really have a potential to the upside, not knowing that the equity markets were really correcting down sharply a week later because of fears for the Chinese stock markets. So, what is the situation now? What are the perspectives for the euro dollar, for example, in this market situation? Okay, well, we've put a um, long term FinGraphs a mosaic on the screen. Uh, we have euro dollar, cable, euro Swiss, gold. Uh, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, Brent, and the S&P futures. These are weekly charts, so the perspective over the next few quarters. And although the sell-off, which we've had over the last two weeks in equities, was quite significant, uh, we just want to point out that the trends that we've seen over the last two years, at the moment, are still in place. That means uh, euro dollar is still heading down over the long term, uh, cable is still heading down, euro Swiss is still heading down, gold is still heading down, the dollar Swiss is still heading up, dollar yen also Brent is still heading down and the market at the moment is still is still in an impulsive uptrend. Uh, we'll first possibly uh, move to equities because that's where uh, we've seen the most significant move. We're looking here at an investor's view on the S&P futures and uh, with a weekly chart for the perspective over the next few quarters, a daily chart for the perspective over the next few months and an hourly chart for the perspective over the next few weeks. Now let's focus on the long term. Uh, it's true, we're in a very expensive situation. Uh, we are at, uh, in, in a situation which could be labeled a distribution zone. Uh, we could see that our envelopes have been touching each other for most of the year, which is a, a, a sign of market stress, and that our risk index is uh, in the overbought and making, at the moment, new highs in the overbought and has been since the beginning of the year. So it is quite a risky situation and an expensive situation. That said, our trend indicator, at the moment, it's still heading up, despite uh, the fall that, that we've had over the last two weeks, and could lead us into what we call impulsive two targets, which are very extended targets, so I also want to put a caveat there, but uh, which could lead us up to uh, 2200 to 2400 over the next few quarters. So, at the moment, when we just look at uh, the weekly chart, the trend hasn't changed to the downside yet. It's still an uptrend and it still has potential. That said, the move that we've seen over the last two weeks was uh, quite significant. Uh, the question is, is that uh, we've had a very strong sell-off. Uh, it probably reached its targets in terms of prices, but not in terms of how long a sell-off should actually last. Uh, the question is, is that are we back to normalization? Is, is it going to move back up very quickly? As for example, it had done back in uh, October last year. We've had a similar very sharp drop and it moved up very, very quickly to the upside. Now, I just want to put myself maybe um, a few weeks back. We were back in uh, early August when we last met and uh, we had seen that the daily chart was in a correction down. And uh, uh, at the time, it was only a correction, which meant that as long as it stayed above 1983, uh, which was the corrective target down, it would still remain a correction and an uptrend. What happened over the last two weeks is that we made it below these levels, creating an impulsive move down. So, excuse me, creating an impulsive move down. If we look here, uh, the targets, the possible targets, are between the low 1800 and the high 1800. On the move we've done, we've pretty much reached these targets already. Now, in terms of time, it might be a bit short, but we could see the risk index is almost already in the oversold. So if this move up, which we've seen at the moment, does accelerate over the next few days, we could probably think that the situation is similar to the one we saw last October. Now, it's going to be a fight because you see this 2000 level is quite important. It has served here as a strong uh, support zone uh, at the end of last year and early this year. And if we go back a bit, it also was a strong resistance back in uh, September 2014. So we're, quite, we're at quite a crucial stage. So uh, we're going to have to navigate over the short term a bit to be able to, uh, to have a view of, of what might happen over la the next few weeks. So let's look at the hourly. Well, the hourly is still in a downtrend. It has made an intermediate bottom and quite a strong uh, reaction. 
Now we do see that envelopes are touching each other, hence a bit of market stress here, and uh, a situation where the market is trying to decide if it's uh, going to uh, make it back out to a, a normalized situation, or if it's going to move back down. At the moment, this hourly chart is neutral. That means it has a bear trend and no targets. We'll go to the more shorter term, so the trader's view, to try to get a short-term perspective. So a trader's view is a combination of a 60-minute, a 15-minute, and a 4-minute chart. The 60-minute chart is heading up and possibly has the capacity to make it back to uh, previous uh, top levels. Uh, at the moment, there's no stress. Uh, uh, well, the risk index is not in the overbought, and there's no stress on the envelopes. However, we can see that over the last two days, we've been in a consolidation. So in, able, in order to maintain this momentum up, we really have to uh, keep it as a correction and not move into the impulsive territory. So the levels to watch here are 1959 or below 1960. As long as we could keep above that, uh, the correction up short term is holding. Uh, we think it might hold because you hear you're already in the oversold in the oscillators. So to summarize it, stolen uptrend over the long term, quite a significant drop and we cannot guarantee that it's over, but it has reached, uh, uh, in terms of price, some, uh, some important levels. It's trying to make a comeback. The alley is neutral at the moment. The next few days are going to tell us if it has the strength to hold its gains and move higher. Mm -hmm. In this last days of normalization that we have seen, we don't know how it's really turned out, you just mentioned, but what is the perspective of the, for the euro then? Well, the euro, interestingly enough, if we look here at, at an investor's view, uh, made a huge rally uh, last week. Uh, a lot of uh, positions were set on uh, the US growth further gaining momentum and uh, the hike in interest rates, which and, uh, so that the differential would be in favor of the dollar. And uh, the sell-off that happened last week, la last week did cast out over this scenario. And so there was a lot of short uh, covering. And the last time we were here, we were saying that uh, uh, the downtrend of the euro, which we can see here over the weekly chart and the daily chart, uh, there was probably a lot of people trying to get back into it and that there was uh, quite a significant risk to have strong rallies against this trend. And so we were forecasting something between 113 to 114 uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it did make it up much higher. Uh, it, did, it did actually make it up almost to 117 and it now seems to have reversed its course. So if we look at the situation on the euro, for us, the long-term the, the long trend, so the perspective of the next few quarters on this weekly chart is still a bear, and with targets uh, which could possibly lead us down to almost parity. And we would label the bottom that we had earlier this year for now as an intermediate bottom with envelope touching each other and the risk index in the oversold territory. That said, the envelopes were still heading quite aggressively down, so it was an intermediate bottom, or we believe it, it should be an intermediate bottom. Now, the correction up has been lingering on now for uh, almost uh, five months, and at the moment, it hasn't really been able to turn uh, this downtrend. It may do over, over the next few weeks, but it really has to become impulsive. And uh, if I remember right, the impulsive targets are around 117. So as long as we stay below this 117 level, we still theoretically in a downtrend. Now, if we look at the hourly, the hourly is moving down uh, uh, quite rapidly at the moment, has just turned impulsive and may be perhaps anticipating the equity markets which are moving in reverse. So uh, at the moment, we would be uh, uh, quite... Uh, 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 in a resume downtrend situation uh, on the euro dollar. We'll just watch the traders view very quickly because things are moving quite quickly. And so if you look at the 60 minutes, it's still heading down. And the levels to watch here are the levels of the corrective up uh, targets on the 15 minute. So that's uh, the exact opposite of what we have seen on the S&P. And so here are the levels to watch are 112.66. Uh, if we were to make it above that, uh, this downtrend that we see at the moment may be uh, cast into doubt and we may see another move up. But at the moment, our favorite scenario is one of normalization and a normalization would mean that the euro is resuming its downtrend. Similarly, 
on gold. Last time we were here, we were anticipated that it could move up to strong uh, resistance levels around 1150. Uh, those 1150 were reached. We actually made it above 1160. But similar to the euro, uh, it seems to be reinitiating re its downtrend. We can see the weekly is still negative and can lead us back down to um, uh, f the thousand level over the next few quarters. The daily is also still negative, had an intermediate bottom here and a reaction, but uh, could lead us back down below 1100 over the next few months. And the hourly has started to correct down. The crucial levels to watch here to confirm this acceleration, which would probably confirm the acceleration down of the euro again and the acceleration up uh, on, on equities, is around 1120. So as long as we stay ab uh, above 1120, uh, we are starting to doubt as to our scenario. Making it below 1120 down in a resumed downtrend uh, would probably uh, confirm a normalization in the markets. Thank you very much, Jean-François, for your point of view on the markets in these, yeah, let's really say moving times right now. Thank you very much. Thanks. And thanks for watching. Do make sure to keep clicking back on the Dukas Copy TV website for latest updates and exclusive interviews. Have a great day and see you next time.